Welcome to the latest edition of Loaded Balls, and I'm delighted to be joined by the co-founders of the East Belfast J Club, Dave McGreevy and Richard McGuire. Boys, thanks very much for jumping on the call tonight. Thanks for having us. And I've always I've got my expert in all things J A, Mark Fitz. Mark, thanks again for coming on. Um, you're a regular fixture now, so that's you cemented for, for the future now. Right, and here, there's no such thing as an expert, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> only someone with opinions. I see that with your predictions, I know, but we'll get, <laughs> we'll get to that in, in the future. Boys, um, lockdown has been, everyone has been bored with lockdown and, you know, they've taken up hobbies, cycling and that there, but you have taken it a step further by thinking to yourselves, right, what can we do here? We're going to form a, a GA club. How, when, and... Who is responsible for this madness? <laughs> Richard. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we weren't bored, put it that way. <laughs> How did it go, lads, then? Um, well, I was, uh, I was thinking about this, actually. So I went and looked back at uh, myself and Dave's WhatsApp chat. I don't know if you've looked back at it, Dave, yet. But um, it basically started at 7.07 a.m. on a Sunday morning. And he... Don't know what he was doing up at that stage. He really just hadn't been to bed. But uh, he texted me and said, uh, you know, what do you, what do you think? Do you think there'd be any legs in these Belfast uh, Gaelic team? I replied back, you know, you'd be up. <laughs> Get the bed, basically. Um, and um, we had a bit of a back and forth between 7 and 8 a.m. And uh, at 9, 15, the tweet was sent out. So... Um, you know, there's there's two hours had passed, and at ten oh seven, the Irish news <laughs> were, were beating back saying, "Can we get an interview done?" <laughs> so within the space of uh, three hours, the journalists were on the, were on the scene, and then um, by 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 one o'clock, Dave was texting me and saying, "We've got a team here ready to go." Um, so there was me thinking, oh, "We'll get a wee kick about in the field somewhere and we'll have a bit of banter." Um, to one o'clock, having a full team out and not even getting. I'm not even first choice anymore. Uh, and by the end of the day, then the numbers just kept racking up. So every every few hours, there was another phone call being like, "You'll not believe it, there was a camogie team." You know, and it just kept yeah. it just kept rolling on. You know, yeah. like that. And what's your background, then, boys? How the the where have you played football and heard of that? We've just learned about hurling, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so for myself, uh, I'm the Connacht, um, but I lived over in London for eight years and obviously played a bit uh, for London when I was over there, but I'm, I'm home now coming three years and again, just when I moved back, I was back playing for the Connacht there for one season and I'm just, I'm trying to retire, but it's just it's not really happening. Uh, so I'm kind of looking to wind down now, uh, but I find myself at East Belfast GA. I was looking forward to kind of spending the rest of my days at the Connaught and you know taking the underage teams and you know being part of that, that setup. But uh, you know the place the places life brings you. Uh, I suppose uh, I, mean, I suppose a Richard. We were very happy just playing third rugby for the Estonians. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what about you then? Yeah, so. Um... Went the went the red high and really started there under the uh, stewardship of uh, Pat O'Hare, probably. Um, first time I'd ever kicked the ball was in first year. I remember him just tell tell me, just just kick the ball as far as you can. Um, I played rugby, you know, before that, so I was big enough and burly enough to play fullback. And he's like, "You just catch it, just poof it back down the pitch." Again. <laughs> so that did me for a few years, and then I suppose we eventually upskilled a little bit and. Um, Got into the sort of uh, McLaren team and stuff like that, and won the Ulster Championship at the Red High there. So that was that was a great 
highlight for me. And then I um, had just played a carry off uh, the whole time as well, you know, um, some, some great guys there and had always just played away. And then went away to England for university and unlike Dave, went back to playing rugby. So I came back to playing Gaelic then. It was a hard grind to get back to fitness again. So <laughs> injuries caught up on me and I sort of probably hung up the boots 10 years ago and um, thought, well, that's me. <laughs> And then, That's the last you know, time I'll. <laughs> and, then decide, and then decide to form your own team to get a game, and then you kind of get, yeah, and then get shoved out of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, whenever you first heard about this, um, did you think there was any credibility in it, or was it, you know, did you think it was uh, a tweet that was just sent out by, you know, some random person that was looking a bit of media attention, maybe? Me? Was surprising. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Um, definitely when I seen that tweet on, on a Sunday morning, you're sitting there going, is this for real? And I know it was going around the WhatsApp groups and people are going, you know, is this one of these party accounts or you know, something like that? But no, it turned out it was, it was all true. But yeah, talk about previously, where they came from, from that tweet to where they are now is nothing sort of remarkable. Not only in Gaelic, Holland, Camogie, it's, it's just incredible what they've done. And... David there, I know David and went to school with him. I know how passionate he is about his Gaelic. And to really, you can have these great ideas, but to follow through on it and to get it where it is now, that's, that's the real key to it. So brilliant inspiration. And the thing now is keeping the longevity in it and keep it going. But it's, it's been a, it's a remarkable thing for Downing Football. East Belfast needs GA. Yeah. No, and boys, you have a club president as well, Linda Irvine. And how did that come about then? How did you get... Um, these people to buy into the idea and you know to put their name towards the club as well. Um, so I I have um, previously worked with Linda um, through through East Belfast Mission, so I was sort of aware, you know, what her what her whole ethos was and um, her her background and stuff like that. And then I think she had, she was one of the first people to to tweet back to a private message back to Dave there. Um, and just say, like, well done, if there's anything I can do. Um, and I said to Dave, right, that's, that's <laughs> we're going to be our cross-community open club. Mm-hmm. That's exactly the type of person that you, that you get in there right from the start. She nails her colours to the mast. She does what you say she does. And, um, you know, it, it, it's great to have someone like that, um, you know, even just to inform us, you know, and keep us right um, is amazing. Dave, how did you feel then whenever, you know, this was getting legs and, you know, a, a tweet on a Sunday morning has now exploded? Yeah, well, it was, there was a point now, I was just like, oh, uh, God, me and Tricky could just walk away from this and no one ever knows. <laughs> 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 it was more than just a passing thought, uh, but I suppose with me and the rest of the background, look, we can do this here, we know how to do with GA backgrounds, we can really we can get it going. I, I know how to get the right people. I'm sure I know the right people and to get in the right positions. But even at that, it was just like, right, so we'll get a football team together. And then there's like uh, Camogues coming in and then Hearns coming in. And you're just like, right, actually, this is huge here. Um, you know, so where we're kind of sitting now, we we'll, would we'll have like three teams, just the men's football and three for the ladies' football. And, only two hurling teams and uh, two Kamugi teams. Um, so, like, I had to, I, I didn't really reach out to that many people. You know, right. GA reaching out to us, like, down, like, Sean Ogre, that, like, they were fantastic, just to give us advice how we should set up you know, so we don't make a whole kind of uh, central, um, uh, central board thing with uh, different subcommittees coming out. And yes. Kind of getting uh, jobs out to them. Uh, so no, it really, you know, it really just uh, obviously wasn't expected to be as big as this. But I suppose when you look at the East Belfast, it's BT three right around the BT six, so it's actually a huge area. I know um, on it is BT thirty, and if you look at uh, the amount of teams in that area, mm-hmm. there's about at least half a dozen teams. I went and counted like, but uh, I'm not that sad. But uh, <laughs> Oh, he, he just doesn't want to play. Just kind of, <laughs> not yet. Like, 
there was the there was a moment I was trying to find out parishes and I got in con contact with Down and Connor uh, diocese and I was just like, this has got a bit extreme. In this uh, I'll just focus on post codes that'll do for now. Uh, <laughs> but I read that there's there was tw over twenty schools then, and uh, you know, three primary schools and eleven mm -hmm. secondary schools. Uh, so, I mean, that's just that's mental. Um, to count it of three primary schools. I don't know secondary school. I, I do. I don't know of any secondary schools in the government, uh, yeah. but there is one in Cross Gar, but sure, you could have one in Dar Cross and you know wherever else. Mm -hmm. And not the St. Colin Kills, but uh, like three primary schools in itself is quite big. Uh, but we've twenty three. Yeah. Uh, so is the no next one. is the next step then to get um, you know club members in there to coach GA and to set up a, an academy. Well, that's a that's a huge project that we have in our hands, and we're working our way to that at the moment. You know, uh, so we we are reaching out to the likes of uh, you know Emma McCauley um, is doing this here. Um, so she's kind of heading up herself and Graham are heading up our kind of youth committee and getting this all put together. So there is a lot of parents reached out that want to get their parents involved and. We have to look at it as a club as well about being sustainable. So we are saying that there is okay who has coaching um, obligations here and want to take a team mm -hmm. uh, next year. So that's where our sustainability will come from. So they're, they're really the, the people that we have to focus on, that people are going to be here, not just one year or two years. Um, you know, people that are going to be here for the next 10 years, 20 yeah. years. You know, that's where we're going to get our sustainability from. Um, I suppose. My time in London, it's very transient over there, so people are only really over for about five years max, and then they're away somewhere else. Uh, we all live in East Belfast, we're not going anywhere, so you know, we want to make this their club as great as we can and offer, um, you know, as much opportunities to play. Uh, new sports as much as you know, people in the area, uh, get all the benefits uh, from playing uh, GA. Mark, you were saying about St. Paul's having, you know, a lot of um, schools and that, the, 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 they're the next sort of power that could, that could take advantage of that. Is the schools, um, the coaching that, do you think it's that's where, you know, you're going to get your players from and the members from for the club? Especially in the environment that East Belfast and St. Paul's find themselves. And, you know, I suppose I'm a school teacher myself, but... Look, looking at, say, East Belfast, there, you're going looking at your state sector schools, you're looking at your integrated schools, that, that's where the scope is. Um, and, that, you know, I hope the plans are there to go, to go into those sort of schools. But at the end of the day, GAA, we are a cross-community unit. Um, suppose, similarly, they've got these large towns like Bangor, Newton Arts, then the likes of Hollywood, Catholic schools, Integrated schools, state schools, they all need to be targeted. That's, that's there's a huge population base along that north down area. And with East Belfast and Paul's, there's plenty to go around there, but it's the potential are scary in terms of resources and numbers to work with and people to target. It's there's serious potential there. Mm -hmm. Boys, and have you used the template? Like, is there a cl recent club that, that started up, or have you just started from scratch and just um, taken advice from, from, from people that are involved now? We were thinking more bridges, Richard, weren't we? Like, you know, under 12s and bring that up. Yeah, that was the initial plan was to, you know, start small and just gradually build that over, over time. <laughs> and, uh, the, the people of East Belfast decided differently. So, um, no, I, I've, I've, I, like, I'm carrying off Claire and, and I've spoken at length to Paul McConville there. And, you know, he was one of the founders there back in the, like, 72. You know, and he, he would sort of say, well, we had all these types of problems, you know, back back then, you know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was the 70s, it was a DUP area and stuff like that. And he would have said, you know, we were sort of a wee bit of an uphill challenge as well, but we just kept at it and kept grinding away. You know, and you know the size of that club now, so it's taken maybe a long time to get there, but, uh, you know, hopefully we can use guys like that and learn from their experience and then, and then help us get that speed a wee bit quicker. You know, you don't want to be here 30 years time saying we've just made it, you know. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah. And St. Bridges then, what, Dave, were you going to um, take from them, you know, St. Bridges and Antrim, obviously? 
Yeah, um, well, I have a bit of a family connection there in St. Bridget's, so my cousin would have been part of that team that they kind of brought all the way from under 10s right up to senior, mm-hmm. and that's how they built that club, um, you know. And uh, Dermot across at uh, <clears throat> um, St. Bridget's, um, again, got in contact with me, uh, just chatted through everything that they'd done when they were setting up, gave me some really good, great advice, actually. And... Uh, you know, he was kind of saying, you went the other way around, you went huge. <laughs> and then we just kind of feed it down that way. It wasn't my call, like, you know, I would love, I would love to do this other way. Uh, but, uh, you know, there was just the right people who came on board, Richard. Like, and we were kind of, we wouldn't have been able to do this by ourselves, but there was just fantastic people got involved. And, you know, we really just kind of came together and built something solid, a real solid foundation. And, uh, you know, we're kind of set up now for uh, really building something very special here. Yeah. And um, then, you know, the, the forming a new club in East Belfast now without its problems and it's well documented the security alert you've had as well. Um, do you know, had you foreseen that this may be a problem and, you know, had it derailed you in any way? No, well, I suppose, um, you know, we were trying to do our due diligence beforehand and make sure that we we're speaking to as many people from the communities as possible. And, you know, I think everything that we've done so far, we, we try to like include as many people as possible, you know, from, from badge design to kit design, you know, the South we're going, can we offend anybody with this? You know, are we going to annoy Glen Torrance supporters? Are we going to annoy Arn the Wolf players? You know, there's so many sort of decisions that we're trying to make. So we continually tried to make those in, in the right the right uh, the right way um i think yeah we, we weren't we weren't waiting we, we always thought you know we're this will generally annoy some people um and we don't know what extent people would take that to um i think it sort of had two sort of sides to the coin of obviously a lot of players felt a wee bit less secure in coming along um but on one side the community actually has risen up you know a lot of a lot of people coming out and saying, actually, we completely condemn this. This has nothing to do with us. Or, you know, and in a way, that's, com- that's good to hear because, you know, at, l- at least, um, you know, there's politicians and there's, there's community leaders and there's all these types of people that have, that have come out and say, no, we see what you're doing. It's, it's okay. Crack on type of thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in a way, it, it is, a, is a good thing. It's never good to have a, a bomb alert. But, you know, silver linings and all that it's uh we're still here we're still flying on there's guys back at trim the next night it hasn't really if anything it's brought maybe the players with the closer together and mm-hmm. um, so that's that's been a real you know great advantage and Dave, did anyone say to you about it that the worries or anything they got there any of the players or administrators as well well um everyone reacts differently uh so there was the whole you know people's families really saying to them mm-hmm. about you should think twice and you know um but i think the reaction really as richard said from all sides of the community uh, especially in east belfast about just calling out completely wrong um you know it, it kind of give it give our players uh, some real assurance uh, just across the club so uh, no it was it was good to see now that uh people are just well in the club anyway or just uh, maybe a bit more determined. You know, let's. This is yeah. the right thing here, guys. Let's let's keep at it, like. And the badge, man. How did that come about? Did you have any input in that? Was there certain aspects that you just wanted in, in the design, or? You want that one, Richard? No, I'll let, I'll let you take that, because we had we had a <laughs> and then the badge came along and completely blew us out of the water for our design aspirations this year. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to speak and hear every question, like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, it just uh, I suppose it all just came together. We're, we weren't debating what to call the club. Um, there was all these different ideas coming through. Some of them were good. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the one they were, were having different votes on them, and uh, we can't kind of came that it was just we're just going to stick with East Belfast GA. So that saved me a load of hassle by changing emails and everything. So it was very great. <laughs> 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 Funny enough, I was the one that tied up the scores, but uh, it was uh, Lakela, um, East Belfast, that scored quite high, so then we just kind of were thinking, just as a board, 
wouldn't it be nice to maybe have Lakela together and then the other uh, just have that translated and there's a it's there's a the design professor from uh, University of Ulster actually got in contact with us very early days and donated a typeface to us. Um, so that was meant to be, the, his typeface was meant to be for the um, bilingual street signs in Belfast, but it got cancelled. It was meant to launch in April, but it cancelled because of COVID. And uh, he just got in touch, but like, you can use this here. You use, feel free to use it whatever you want. I want to support cross community initiatives. So that's actually in our type, in our crest as well, is that different typefaces up here for the, the different languages. And uh, I suppose if you if you want to get into that about our crest, uh, as we yeah. are, uh, you have the shamrock, uh, red hands, and the thistle to represent kind of all backgrounds. You have the cranes, Reese Belfast, and then the sea, uh, just to remember the, the maritime history, um, East Belfast. And then you also have a sun rising, because the sun rises in the east. Brilliant. So, Brilliant. Yeah. Mark, what do you think whenever you've seen the crest? Some, a lot of thought went into it. Yeah, it was, and I think it was quite thought-provoking in terms of bringing Ulster Scots into it. That, that's the first time I've seen Ulster Scots come into a, a GAA context. Um, I suppose the symbolism of the cranes, Harlan Wolf as well, you know, there's a checkered history with them. And I think it was quite... Um, quite a bold move to include those aspects in it, but I think with the boys, it, it's, it's the cross-community aspect that we're going for, but it was certainly thought-provoking from, from their designs and the content of their designs. And if one thing, the, the, the debate that generated, whether it was Twitter, Instagram, the Irish News, Belfast Telegraph, that serious amount of media coverage, and I suppose that, that's the whole business is inception in East Belfast has just it's been, a, it's been a real media magnet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And boys, where you like? I suppose you are still trying to get over how much media attention you have got from from all this, and you know, uh, forming a new club in down as well. Um, what's the short term and long term goals for the club then? Well, I think short term, you know, <laughs> want to get a few wins under the belt. Luckily, uh, the girls team were out uh, last week. I think now I got got the first win. Um, and and hopefully now you know the guys are working really hard on on the on the training pitch and I think uh, you know every every week we're improving. Um, you know I, I'm doing the stats for the men's football team, so I'm watching them and, and I can see the. Maybe you need to, maybe you need to get on, Richard. That's that's where they're going wrong. You see, maybe you need. No, I know my my pass rate would be a hundred percent. But uh, so so short term, you know, I think we 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 need to get end the season and then sort of relook at our foundations and make sure that, you know, all those, like we, we've just exploded so quickly. Um, you know, we've got guys taking the field, guys are showing up new. Um, you see them for two weeks and you fire them in there, you know, and, and see what they're like. There's, I think in the reserve matches, there's guys, you know, there's nine players at the time making their first team debuts. First, first Gaelic debuts, like the first time they've ever kicked the ball. So you've all sorts of little things like that, and they'll all progress week on week. So hopefully we have a performance and we have a more foundation into the into the the club. Mm -hmm. And then um, as we talked there about the, the youth setup, you know, I think that's next in our our agenda is is starting to think about right how do we how do we build this ecosystem and and keep keep young players coming through. You know, long term, I I can see I I hope now there's a there's a parent sitting home who you know hasn't. Gaelic sports have never been in their in their mind, and they're like, "Fuck sure, we'll send we we Johnny along there, the under sixes or something next year." And you know, in ten years time, we'll be looking at county players coming from, you know, born and bred East Belfast, Mignard Road, Craigie Road. You know, there'll be there'll be people who've never even thought about the sport before, and they'll be coming through. I, I think that for me, it's a long term goal. It's maybe a mm -hmm. fifteen year plan, but. Uh, you know, there'll be, there'll be county players, as you say, that are coming out of Belfast. They might as well be coming out of East Belfast as far as anywhere else. Um, and, and the Camogues as well, like, you know, out of all, out of the four codes, there'll be, there, there's very good players uh, and young players coming up there. So, who knows? Brilliant, brilliant. Then. Dave, do you have a base yet? You know, are you looking at, at somewhere to, to call home and... and you know, club rooms and, and for functions and that there and just as the for the wider community? 
Oh, you know, fast Richards. Fast uh, <laughs> Richards. <laughs> uh, uh, no, um, there was a few things in the pipeline, but uh, it, it's all kind of coming together. Um, but uh, I'm not joking, actually. That is Richards. Uh, you okay. know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's his job now uh, for that one. Like, um, I'm on the pitch and uh, Richard's doing stats on the sideline and sorting out the facilities and all. So he, he does all the hard work and you get to play football. So yeah. that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's, that's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like a game of tennis these days. Like. Richard, so what, what is the plan for, for the facilities then? We've, we have a few irons in the fire and I think, you know, things, things, things have changed so quickly. Um, you know, we, we'd, we had initial meetings with a couple of uh, community like organizations, like rugby clubs, like CLIMS and Malone have been like right in there um, saying, saying, you know, we'd love to support you. Um, but there's, there's logistical issues in around you know, rugby clubs because cricket was played over the, over the summer and really the turnover, you know, nearly all their space that the, the cricket. So putting more, more pitches in there just isn't really feasible. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a few irons in the fire. I don't want to give too much away too soon. You're very, things change. You're, you're, you're being very coy, is right. Things so maybe... change very quickly. Yeah, <laughs> You've been doing this media thing too long. You see now. <laughs> Dave and I have been in, in in certain locations, and we've been sitting at the bar and going, "Jesus, would be wouldn't this be cracker if we were playing a match on Friday night and then coming in here and." You know, the, the band was starting up and, you know, we, we were, we had ourselves five years down the line yeah, yeah. Doing all the things. And, then, and then things like that have fallen through. So I think, um, you know, we'll keep plugging away. And, well, and, you know, I, there's, there's obviously I want the exclusive then, Richard, if that's, if that's all right, whenever you decide <laughs> well, what's happening, that's, I, I call the exclusive. Dave, you say you're, the, you're the, the, the man behind the football then. So I've got a couple of questions for you. How did Shay Kern become the manager, how did you appoint him then? Uh, Kevin Anderson would be the blame for that one. Uh, no, it's, in fairness now, absolutely buzzing to get Shay in there. Uh, myself and Richard were chatting about, because it got pretty big, and we were just chatting about, right, who do we who do we need in here? Like, So we're just kind of thinking, right, we had a fair idea of what we're looking for, you know, someone great reasons, hungry, knows what they're not like, and you know, um, I was chatting to Kevy just about, I forget what I was chatting to him about, but I just asked him the off chance here, do you know anyone that would be looking, this is kind of what we're on the lookout for, I'm sure Kevy works for Shay, so literally I, I text Shay and Shay doesn't know me, but I'm like, so uh, <laughs> met up there uh, in Newcastle just one day and we're just chatting and you know, it was very clear early on, it's like, yeah, Shay's, Shay's the guy here, like, um, and Joe, you know, absolutely buzzing to get him in, like, you know, a big, huge uh, GA background, like, and, you know, just the right person at the right time. So I, I, he's just an ideal fit for us, like, and just, like, every, everyone in the club as well, just buzzing to kind of get uh, Shea on board with us. And did you have to say, you have to start me every game today to get the <laughs> yeah. job, or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he wasn't getting selected for the I'm so. <laughs> I am here. <laughs> Chucky can do stats. <laughs> you know, or I know it hasn't worked out that way. And he, he keeps playing me, so I don't know. <laughs> Mark, you know Shay obviously took on drum for a while as well. I well Shay actually played for us. Um Shay moved down to Dun Drum and we were actually won division three in two thousand and seven and we got into division two in two thousand eight. Shay done a year was at the Um wasn't a great year for us, and then Shay, I think, did the draw back to his own club at Morn Point. He, he returned from there for the last few years, but we, we played East Belfast in the championship. And usually, with a new team, you're expecting them just to go help for Lather, not really have a clue what they're doing. Pleasantly surprised, they were so well organized. Now, maybe we a bit defensive for my legging, but <laughs> very, very well organized, very structured, and they put up you're, a very, very respectful form, you know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're a real purist, though, you know. <laughs> real purist, yeah. No, but for a team that was coming into their first championship game and, and the organisation, the structure they had there, I have to admit, now, it was impressive um, for, for a team making their debut in the junior championship. 
Right, just on the the division four, then. So you stand under the division four of the, of the down league, um, you said three games, I believe. Would that be right? Yeah. And then and then in the in the championship. So, Dave, obviously, you know the the, the standard with playing for the Connacht and out there as well. Um, how do you feel moving back from London and uh, the standard of division four football now? Um, it's a big. Big question, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> um, I suppose uh, well, over in London now, you would back kind of it got less and less now. Um, but over kind of suppose when I went over, you would have a lot of guys that were just fresh over from Ireland. You would, I suppose the recession was a big uh, advance for London football. Um, you know, there was teams I was playing in, and pretty much. Provincial minors under 21 or even the guys you know and medal um, and then you're after the kind of county season you're playing against guys and they're just equally as good like they're mm-hmm. absolutely you can just you know, from the back of beyond the carry and they're just absolutely fantastic players but you know moving moving home now um, do it kind of stick out for me we played against uh, Joe um is to last season, it was actually started last season, and it was a sweeper system that I learned when I was over there, and we would have used it against Lego, the likes of Adrian Marnes. So Adrian Marnes always like a top five scorer in the National League, and uh, we used to play the system against Sligo any time we done them, and literally it just it would have just shut him out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always remember this here last year, Don Kennedy. Just always, well, he's a good bit older than me now, um, but. He's just such a smart player. He's the only player I've been seeing over the South South this year, uh, you know, sweeper system. Um, whereas you kind of get other guys like, uh, and I suppose it's like Marn from Sligo. He always just relied on his brute strength and his you know, mm-hmm. ability to you know, not be thinking about football. Yes. He, he should actually be sussing out. It's a sweeper system. It's set up there to outsmart you. So don't be using your, you know, don't be using your physical presence mm-hmm. to, to be like, you know, so Donald Kennedy would be a kind of like a standout guy um, for, for being able to have the intelligence really uh, to, to uh, you know, get by that one. But uh, last week, I thought now, the two guys in midfield for Cleef. So actually, I went back and looked at the, at the program. Uh, so Lewis McMullen and Rory Sharman, they were fantastic, brilliant midfielders. Um, so Cleef this year, just with the guys they got in the middle of the park, didn't stop working the whole time. Good, smart footballers, you know, good engines in them. Mm-hmm. That's hard, you know. Uh, so, I say Cleef would probably be, I don't want to give him the favourites tag because obviously that's Don Drones. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Good lad. laughs> but uh, you know, he would be a stand, he'd be standout players. But also, I've got to see some balls now a few times just because they're, they're kind of close to us. And, mm. Just in Division Four, every every team always has like two or three really good players, and then everyone else just complements them. Um, and I think like St Paul's of missing a good defender this past while, but the probably guy in this year, Owen Kelly, Owen would have been like a, a minor or a, a hurler, you know, uh, for for down through the years. So Owen's been down in Cork at uh, university, and he's he's. Um, he was pulled back, like, and he was starting for like you imagine like, running down there, and he was he was starting yeah, for yeah. our state team. So he's for Peggy now, but there's a man, and they kind of always lack a good kind of smart defender controlling their defense. But there's Owens in now, and I think things have really came together for St. Paul's this year. So I don't know um, between Khalif and St. Paul. Uh, I don't know who's going to be challenging for Dundrums. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're funny, but you really are funny. But <laughs> well, um, here, they're a real team. <laughs> <laughs> and what the players then that haven't played Gaelic football, how have you just been able to uh, start the trainings? And you know, is it the basic skills first, and then you're trying to get them on the pitch, or like, well, how did how did you even approach that? Um, well, I think um, you know Dave started off training there with the with the fifty odd guys that showed up the first mm-hmm. few weeks, uh, and dealing with every level conceivable. You know, guys with no sporting background versus guys with basketball backgrounds and 
rugby backgrounds and all sorts of so you've all sort of different level physical literacy levels um and um he was working away on, on their basics and stuff like that and i was up a few nights and just just you know tell him boys you know just put your head over the ball and kick it you know it's things that yeah. i suppose we would have actually you take for granted as a as someone who's grown up um to teach an adult how to how to piss pass and stuff properly and all those types of things mm -hmm. a real joy to see their like, enthusiasm for it um and then we had our first match up in um, north belfast and you know, there was Dave setting out his wee cones and telling everyone where they're going to play. And, you know, you're centre half back and you're wing half back. And one of the one of the guys was sort of walking out and I sort of caught his eye. I was like, You're right, Chris? And he was like, I don't know where to stand. <laughs> he literally never, never set foot on a, on a Gaelic pitch before. Like at that stage, we're in Henry Jones, there's, there's no posts and yeah. no, no lines. Um, so we stand there just like looking around him, being like, Where do I go here? Uh, so I was sort of okay. Well, you're wing half forward, and you're up and down here. And there's um, Dave. There's Dave with his sweeper system in play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one's not worth that here. <laughs> he must have. Yeah, that must have happened against Glass Drummond, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah. That well, was a game of tennis. Sure, every time I went out, straight back in. <laughs> no, but fair play, these boys, and, and it's, it's great to see, and it's great for for down football, as we said. Um, just before you go, I'm just. Going to get this. Obviously, the 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 junior um, championship is into the quarterfinal stage now, and uh, you've already tipped Dun Drum, but um, Mark's not happy about that tag already. So we'll go through some of the games here, and um, the first one up is uh, Agnes Devin against Art Glass, and you know they've played each other already. So um, Agnes Devin winning that one, but how do you think? And I'll ask Mark, and I'll put him on the spot. He's my intermediate and senior um, expert, so he's he's got a buy ball this round. What do you reckon? I, I haven't. I, I, see, I looked at the results just um, before that, and I had quite a good result against our glass. Our, didn't it? our glass. So mm -hmm. um, I, I would say we'd go the same way. It was quite a big result. Who knows? Maybe our glass are hiding their hand a bit, thinking we'll get them in the championship later. But that would be a very canny maneuver. So I'll stick with. Stick with them, they go through. Who? Douglas the Finn. <laughs> <laughs> Do you concur? Uh, uh, yeah, I'd say so. Although, I know Mick McGee's kind of back end our glass this year. And, you know, whenever it came back and won, like, I played for the Connaught, you, you won that championship with your home club. It is special. So, just, I suppose, uh, through rose tinted glasses, it'd be nice to see himself win that with mm -hmm. his home club. And, I don't know... Uh, Mick's getting on in years now, so uh, he could kind of go out in the high there. But I'd say the Finn should probably win that. Do you mean uh, Milligan, Mark, come back for, oh, he's, he's uh, um, playing for the Down Masters, and he came back full forward and scored a goal? Yeah, 47 years of age. I think he got a fisted goal there against Ahadurg the other night. Um, some go on. I know he, he keeps himself fit through the soccer and that too, but... Um, at 47 years of age, I know we've a we've a man playing for us, Martin Coffins now 50. He's played in, in five decades, so these boys are looking after themselves. There's serious longevity in them. Unbelievable! There you go, Dave. You've still got a few years left, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a shaver, I'm sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Next one up, St Paul's against Glastroman. Um, how do you think that one's going to go? Yeah. Again, I think uh, is is Connor Harrison still around? Is he is he still playing? So that's Dave. I think he's seen the back of him a couple of times. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's seen him at all. <laughs> it's like a blur. Um, no, your stats say yeah. Uh, I did, unfortunately. Um, so I think the uh, you know I think uh, he's a standout player there. He, you would have to have fourteen sweepers in place maybe to, to stop him. So. Um, I, I, I think, but the St. Paul's had a great result against them. So I, I think if he has a, a good day, it's, it's going to be for a glass drum. Very good. Dave? Uh, it goes St. Paul's in it. I think they've just got their mix right this year. Um, I'll say at that level, your team just has to be balanced. Uh, so I think they've got the balance right this year. And it's, it's been about two or three years coming for those guys. Um, I think. It's possible, apart from Don John, I think it's uh, possibly uh, St. Paul's 
uh, to win this year. But it's a big challenge now. If they get by Gav Stroman, I'd say that's St Paul's win the whole thing. St Paul's, they've <clears throat> talked to them before, but you know they seem to have a, a good plan in place, and you know they've they mentioned their five year plan. Um, you know how important is that? You know the reach them targets every year then. Well, yeah, I suppose they, they are. They, they are hitting those targets. Um, you know, as long as uh, there's nothing too crazy in the uh, in the five year plan. I mean, I'm a QPR fan, and our five year plan didn't work too well. Like, <laughs> well, you saw Harry ran up, so what? <laughs> yeah, God, yeah. Um, so no, those, those guys. Uh, and I'd say I, I'd like to think that we're adding. You know to a GA up here like I'd hate to think any club up here would be thinking that we're going to be taking anything away from them like that's completely not us like we want to add the football up here mm-hmm. uh, I'm Joe Harden and Kogi and uh, I'd like to think that maybe for the likes of us starting up it's probably good simple like right we're not isolated anymore let's let's crack on here and you know playing against those guys whenever I came back I mean they should have been us up in Hollywood there about two years ago but Maybe it's just a belief thing with those guys. They're always pretty handy on their age, and they mm-hmm. never seem to hang on to guys for whatever reason. So maybe it's just came together at the right time and addressed those issues that were happening uh, in the past. And it looks like it, it has. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't mind seeing those guys. Brilliant. Brilliant. And then the next one is Drummond S against Khalif. Um, Khalif with the three wins on, on the spin in, in the league against a much fancy Drummond S. And, Drummond has have a, a shrewd manager in Sean McKenna as well this year. How do you think this one's going to go? Yeah, and I haven't seen Drummond S lately, but you know, back in back in my day, there were always you know a lot of good a lot of good footballers in there, and then I always felt that if you put it up them enough, they would maybe maybe drop down a, a peg or two or lose their discipline. Maybe they've sort of that out recently, but you know, Khalif beat us. Um, I think. They played really well. They're, they're a classy team, I think, and you know, I think they could edge it if, if they put the pressure on the right time. Dude, this is probably one of the, the. This is a very hard match to call, I, I would say, because you know, two two teams that really have aspirations for winning this. Yeah, tough one, real tough one to call. Um, you know, we, well, we could could have caught Cleaver on the hop last day. I think they took us a bit lightly, mm-hmm. um, but. Uh, they're a good team. There's some fantastic players in there. Um, but I kind of know, I would know John and S a bit better. Um, there, there's good players in there again. I think for whatever reason, there is a bit of a struggle on. Um, they always have the eternal issue of soccer players. Um, but uh, I, I think this year, apparently now, they were, they were kind of struggling uh, to get all the guys out. But uh, I just couldn't call that. I really couldn't. That's that is a close one. Mm-hmm. I think they might possibly edge it. They're a very mobile team, you know, and I suppose that was maybe the difference uh, between us and them when we were playing was just the fitness. The last uh, ten minutes, they just they just took off. Yeah, yeah. That was, so that, that could edge it. So yeah, I'd, I'd maybe call. I'll get abuse for it, but. I'd, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it they get abuse all the time so it's it's all right you learn to deal with it okay the last one then Duntrum against Mitchells Mitchells with a great win against Sackadurg and um, you know a team that was in strife last year seemed to have, have come back together again against um, Duntrum who have you know been here and, and seen it all before coin, coin toss for me again I haven't seen these two teams in Literally twelve years. So, um, <laughs> just just for Mark, I'll be a dumb run. For the likes of Mitchells, it's, they're very. I suppose you know it, it is good to see a team like that. They were at, they're in the doldrums there this past years, and it's great to see a team like that. You know, they got it. Um, you know, quarter final of the championships is actually a pretty good return for those guys. You know, maybe something to build on there for next season. Brilliant, brilliant. Boys, that is fantastic. So we've got their predictions for the quarterfinals and um, we'll get you on again to see how you have done. But overall winners then, can you call an overall winner for me to see 
Um, put you on the spot yet? Richard's looking at his notes quickly. I, I just think whoever, whoever wins that Germany SMT match, I think, uh, you know, I'd, I'd hope Khalifa go on and then we could say, well, we were beat by the, by the champions yeah. and could have all been different. Yeah. You know? so <laughs> I'm going to stick with them. <laughs> and Dave, who are you going for? I'm going to go for St. Paul's. I think they've got it just right this year. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Brilliant, brilliant. Lads, fantastic. Some achievement for um, yourselves and the community as well, getting this the team up and up and running. And you know, you seem to have a plan. Um, Richard's being very coy about the, the plan so far. So uh, I hope by the next time you talk to me, you, you have something sorted for um, the grounds and, and, the, and the clubhouses and that there as well. So um, you know, great to see um, down football getting a new club. Mark, it's, it's it's just fantastic what these two lads have done. Yeah, it is. It's a serious undertaking um, to come from that starting point. And fair credit, you want to see our national games thrive in, in non-traditional areas. And that's exactly what they've got set up there to do. And long may it continue because Belfast, now we've teamed sky up way to south Belfast with East Belfast, now St. Paul's, that whole urban area. And I do think that we're going to see county players coming from these four clubs now in the not so distant future. Boys, thank you so much. Um, I'll get you on again, and and hopefully there'll be um, more short short term success for you in the future. All right, thanks very much. Oh, that's the two boys there from from East Belfast, and that was that was brilliant. Um, I mean to get them on the show for weeks, so um, it's, it's great to hear some of the stories and you know some undertaken, but fair play them. Mark, I suppose we'll go on to a new segment of the show, and, and uh, it's something that I I'm excited about is the LOB team of the week, and it's uh, just a. Uh, uh, from the juniors, intermediate, and, and senior championship, and uh, one to fifteen, um, who's made your team this week? Right. Well, uh, I suppose it could be. Uh, it's a bit controversial, you know. Obviously, you. you can't that's what. Get that's there. what I like to hear. Yeah. You can't get to every game, but you, you can watch the you know, highlights and you can look at Twitter coverage and that. But it's a it's a stab at fifteen and a couple of notable mentions. Good stuff. Good stuff. So goalkeeper this week. I went with Guy McMahon Warren Point um, because of his double save from Keelan Doherty. You know, Keelan Doherty really should have put those both chances away, particularly the second one, but um, his, his reaction to Aaron McMahon, especially when he was on the ground, you know, he saved him with his feet. Uh, I just thought they were two real huge moments in that game, that, that double save and quick success. And so, um, great shot stopping. So I went with Guy McMahon Warren Point. Good stuff. First name uh, mentioned in the, in the, in the team. Um, so well done, guy. Per of, uh, we'll get you a mug or something with, with a load of balls on it. <laughs> taking, your, taking his way to you as we speak. Um, so the full back line, Mark. Right. Um, done a wee bit of, you know, switching about here. I've gone for Darrell Brannigan. Now, I know Darrell Brannigan played more in the half back line and a more maybe advanced role, but to fit him in there, Darrell Brannigan was, I thought he was superb against um, Warren Point. One thing I'm noticing him, there's not too many, and I just don't mean in down or also on this island in Ireland, there's not too many boys that can carry a ball under control and a pace like Darrell Brannan can have. And he puts the brighteners up any team because when he gets the ball, he goes through down the heart of the team. And I thought he'd done on three or four occasions against one point. Absolutely brilliant. It's that innate skill. It was just superb. So in defense of you, and he can mix it with the defensive duties as well, and he's haggard. So Got him slotted in there to the fence, but he, he was he was my first pick there in at number two. Brilliant. Number three then? Three. Um, this guy, I'd, I'd seen him playing a bit before, but my God, he really burst onto the scene. And again, it's another player from the, the Warren Point team was um, Patrick Murray. Now, that but that man, a couple of points, the, the really important point at the end in the Warren Point Co. 2 game, uh, he was superb. Again, another player, just with so many athletic players down and down. Mm -hmm. Galloping up the field from full back, went on check, 
confetti, you know, pull back the confetti, so pull back the you contribute scores from pay. Like these are these are were rare commodities, but now they're becoming more of a, a stable part of our game. But yeah. thought he was superb, and again, he he's a boy needs to be on our team. He can't definitely. Yeah, yeah, like he seems to be nailing down that. He'll have a bit of competition with Jeremy McGovern coming home and for the full back role, but um, he seems to have got rid of his injuries in that there as well. You know, he was sort of played it a wee bit. Uh, Paddy with, with injuries and, and maybe was in danger of not fulfilling his potential because there's always been talk of him, you know, being the county fullback. Yeah, the, the, well, he came of age not performance anyway. It was yeah. a top door performance, and it, it, he is agile and a good reader of the game. I just love the fact that he has the confidence on the team and the management have the confidence to allow him to go the way up the field and do what he did in front of the, the post. Yeah, uh, number four then. Yeah, four again. Fourth player now from from the War Point Two game, and um, I went with Lynch, the War Point cornerback, who stuck to his task, never give up, played hard for his duration on the field. Um, again, a younger player who's who's getting you know top experience here in the heat of the battle in these big senior championship games, but a very tidy, uh, accomplished cornerback who is one of those you know those one of those cornerbacks where they do their job. You know, you, you, you ask them to do a task and they do it. And he seems to be one of those boys. He's a great asset for one point. No, he seems to be growing into a, a great man marker and very important for, for one point. Number five, then into the half back line. Yeah, in the half back line, going for Savo, Captain Daniel McCarthy, who you know, had a great underage career with Down. You know, he's in there with the Down Miners and that, and then in through the 21s. Saddle needed a big performance. You know, you know, they were in that loser section and they got it against the Connor to beat the two fourteen to one four. And in those games when there, there is that a lot of stake, you do need your your captain and your, your leaders to, to shine and he done exactly that. So um a player I think in the next couple of years again gets himself up to you know, gets his club back in division two and he's he's a player to watch now in the next the next way. Very good. Uh center half back then. Six the the superb Rory McCricker, you know, this this boy is lighting up the championship. Mm-hmm. What what a player. You know, we've mentioned him a couple of times on here now. That's a top player we've got on our hands here and down. And later on will be um, delighted with the progress he's making. Again, he, he holds the centre well. Good protection for his full back line. He can compete in the air around the middle, which is great. And another one of these boys that's just not afraid to bomb forward either. He, he's, he's got it all, but what a serious player he is. And... His performance against Shamrocks was second to none. No, I seen it. I was at it, and uh, he was stroking fifties over. I think if there had been eighty yards out, he would have stroked them over. So, you know, he's got. A, he seems to have everything, as you said, and you know, very exciting for Down to have a, a, a defender they got as well, Mark. Brilliant, yeah, a, 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 a real strong ball playing defender. That's mm-hmm. that's what you want doing, and he, he's robust as well, and he, and he can mix it physically. So, yeah, he's he's got the whole package. You know, brilliant. Number seven then. Seven, I went for uh, a bit of a valley hole, and I suppose you could class him a better now. It's Joe Morphe. Now, Joe Morphe was when he was rounded down, probably run all day for you. And similarly, he's doing the same with valley hole now. If he's not back helping out in front of his goalkeeper, he's linking play with the midfielders, he's, he's getting up, he's getting in team spaces, he's tackling, he's harassing players. Um, again, I'm a, a lot of all rounders here in this defense, and he's a lot of all round attributes. Um, Still a very, very useful player for Ballyholden, and he is very good, strong performance against Longstone, and he was part of that defensive unit that helped keep the Longstone, you know, attack well and be quiet. Yeah, yeah. So our midfielders then. Midfielders, first one I went for. It was it was hard hard to separate the the McCartan boys more in points. So I went with Cormac. He, he got a couple of good points, and I know not a hell of a lot, a lot of long ball went out in the middle sector in that game, but. Um, he was he was confident and he was willing to put it up the kill too as well in the physical stakes. But been able to get forward and get those couple of nice scores. And again, he did work hard first team. You could see him tracking back a lot and he was vocal and he was just just a linchpin there at eight for for one point. His midfield partner, I went for an up and coming player at the moment, Charlie Smith from Mayor Bridge. Now if it, it, if you get, get a chance to watch the BBC, if they've done a sports, have done a highlight reel of that Mayo Bridge playing game, his free taking off the ground was something else. Mm-hmm. And I know we're now, boys, maybe in the mindset, free takers, it's all, everything out of the hands, but 
just watching this young fella hit off the ground. He says he's been doing this practice in clubs since he's 10, 11 years of age. And he's superb with his kicking and he's so accurate and he's confident too. But Charlie Smith in there, and we'll not to forget, he's a, a good, good skill as well and um, good in the air. Mm-hmm. So him and um, Cormac part more in the midfield partnership. Brilliant. Half four line then? Half four, 10, Danny Savage, Brian Scott, uh, came seriously in the light in the second half. He maybe really lost four points in a row. He had instrumental and in that magnificent comeback. What you know, what that comeback was all about was just sheer you know grip and determination to get back into that game. They were fourteen five down at the stage. Now, conduct serious questions to ask her, You know, in, in this modern game with all these different ways of managing the game out to the finish, how conduct didn't have the awareness to do that. I don't know, but full credit to Brands for getting back in and getting the extra time win. But Danny Savage, who's had a good championship so far, and when him was scored, and the leadership there too, and he's the number 10. Well, I was commentating that on that game for, for Park TV, and he actually blocked the ball on his on the, on the 14-yard line as well. And I, I couldn't, I had to look twice to see if it was Danny Savage that was doing it, because... And as I said in commentary, you try to give other players a chance to step up and, and be the man for, for Bransford, but he keeps on, you know, he keeps on mentioning him. And people are probably sick to that of, you know, uh, Bransford are more than Danny Savage, but when he's playing the gut, you know, Darno Hagen was on him like uh, at that stage. Yeah, and that shows you the level Danny's playing at the moment. I know Danny, and Danny's a, he's a lot of passion there for Bransford. And, he, he's a player that through the years, maybe Brands for a couple of lean years, or he'd be wanting, and he mentioned it in the recent hours, he's argued, he'd be wanting Brands for to get back up as I refer to the top table. But mm-hmm. that, that that was a great win for Brands. You know, that's that's two wins, they're into the quarter finals now. And for for a team playing with Stephen Poacher's style of play that maybe only got one eight against Glenn, to go out and hit that score against uh Clendoff was impressive and it shows that they maybe do have more than one facet to, to their play. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Uh, your focal point then in the attack, number 11? 11, Ryan Helm from Gaff. Um, he scored the penalty against the Rake for half time. And he's, he's at 11. He's, the 11 you, you see in a traditional sense. Gets on the ball. It's quick thinking. And delivered in the full forward line. Um, at the drop of a hat, link, links other runners coming in. Can get a score himself. Again, another player that has a lot in his arsenal, but he's he's thirty two. He, he can combat himself around that middle third. But but he was excellent. That from Gaffwin was a big mm-hmm. big shock. I I do think it was, and and Rake will be hurting from that. But score four eight. He was banging four goals. Paggy Downey and Ashley Corner among the goals too. So that that was a big big win for from Gaff. And, I, I'd be interested to see now the effect that has on the rape because they will be seething after that, you know, especially losing more than two. The uh, I was at that game as well, and um, the the speed that from Gath have in that four line, especially uh, the two Shays, is, is frightening. And you know, whenever they get ahead of steam, then you know there's nothing you can do. You maybe just throw boys on the line and just hope for the best. Yeah, that's it. And um, you know, they they were. Into the second half, they, they were trailing 11 minutes into the second half, and it was only really that third, and uh, at the end of the third quarter, coming into the final quarter, that they, they got back in the ascendancy. But they finished incredibly strong, and even when Andrea had those couple of late goals from Doyle and Rory Cunningham, they, they held firm, they, they got their own the fourth goal themselves. But it's that mix they've got now with Paddy Downing back from Bransford, and Mark Conley still in there, plus Colin again at six, and then all the other talent they have around there. And Ray, you know, they, they're going now into this next round. Um, potentially, Bally Martin and Ali Call, they need to get back on track. I did have them as strong favours, but, you know, hats off to Strum Gaff for, for putting in that performance. Oh, it was, it, was, it was excellent. Number 12, then. Number 12. This was a player who I believe this is possibly his best performance in a Kalku shirt to date, and that was Eugene Brannigan. I would play like a man possessed. He started off with throw in midfield, but his fitness enabled him to cover the whole pitch. He scored, he got a couple of scores as well. But what a performance he put in. Just sheer work rate, dogged work rate, never knowing when he's beat. And 
that, that, that's a spine of performance that I've seen Eugene Browning and playing for the coup in, in recent years. And again, a great thing. He, he's brought more to his game, I think, maybe than the past 12 to 18 months in terms of attacking attempt and, and that finishing power now. He's mm-hmm. developed. So, you know, fair juice, you ever maybe more than Thomas Gilligan, maybe he's instilled that in him. But Eugene Browning and a top performance from him against Warren Pipe. Well, it'll be interesting to see now. I want to talk to you about Kilku, but we'll, we'll discuss that whenever we're, we're doing the, the Burn Kilku game. Um, full forwards then, your, your score getters. Right. 13. Imagine in previous weeks, this is a man now that's going to be one of these boys for maybe the next decade. It's just going to be a scoring machine, and that's Seamus Locker and Ballyhone. He, he put away a big score against Longstone. He's a free taker, extraordinaire, dead ball specialist, gets gets on good chances from open play, and Top, top forward we've got in our hands here as well. And again, another, he's had a really good championship. Him and Danny Savage are, are two real standout forwards in this championship. But Seamus Larkin from Ballyhone is really making a name for himself now. Yeah, yeah, but I think he got eight, eight frees from for Ballyhone, so it's phenomenal scoring. Like, really was. Um, 14 then, you're full forward. The, the adaptable Pierce Laverty of Saul. You know, probably start off underage career, you know, wing back, play a bit of midfield, trade it wing forward. Now he's got this role. I'm, I'm not going to say the edge of the square because Pierce Lowry uh, roams more than further than the, the edge of the day. He had a brilliant game against St. John's. Um, that's a player who's, who's on top of his game. And, you know, he has, Pierce Lowry hasn't even got near his prime yet, which is... Um, Something to note as well. He's still still learning the game, but he is absolutely the, the key cog for Saul now. And Saul are in the quarter final. If if they are to get into the semi and um, look at even further, Pierce Laverty will be the man to stop the opposition. But what a performance of full forty. He's got everything. Um, there's there's hardly a player you see right now with the physique he has and that full credit to his individuality there in terms of what he's done to get himself you know that physique. So um, great, great player on a great game against the Jones. He's my fourteen. Yeah, he said his coach is his inspiration. You know, whenever he's doing the weights and up there, so it's, it's yeah, he's, he's <laughs> running from the best, isn't he? <laughs> ATF. Yeah. He's talking about Ronan McCartan. <laughs> that's, that's his hero. That's his hero. Right? Uh, fifteen, then Mark. Fifteen to finish off the start. Of fifteen, and um, Matty Bagno and Glenn. Glenn, uh, you know, I know the bridge were leading for the, for the vast majority of that game, but Matty Bagel put in a, a real good performance. Um, he's a great player from long distance. You know, you see a lot of teams now, and I think it makes sense to get in around the scoring zone and the only shoot mm-hmm. when the chance is definitely on. But Matty Bagel was a bit of maverick in him. He, he'd pop over 40, 50 yards if, if, if it, you know, the, the notion takes him. He had a good few frees against the bridge and he got a couple of good scores from play as well. But um, still a classy player, always was. Just maybe a pity he doesn't have Shane Rune Miller there to compliment him at the moment. But um, Glenn did, did stick with Mayo Bridge for, for um, durable periods and he was one of the main reasons for that. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's, that's our first 15. <clears throat> Moving forward, we'll, um, we'll do an intermediate on a uh, junior intermediate and um, senior team um, but just at the minute because of the, the matches um, that's our combined 15 and you know it'd be hard to argue against that Mark so well done well done okay so the next part of the show then is the preview Show for round three, um, the boys have done the 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 junior there, so we'll go straight into um the intermediate, and it's the first match up, Clannabana against Tullish. Um, I think they're all derbies here. Would it be right? Yeah, close enough. Yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah, so um, hard one to call. I think uh, Tullish come out in front in in the first game. Yeah. So look, t- Tullish there. Um. Well, they're just coming off that defeat. It was, it was a poor enough game from all accounts against Anna Clone. Uh, you know, the, the loss by a goal. Coming in against Clan Nabana, 
I don't think Clannabana were ever in any difficulty against Bosco, and they probably could have been Bosco by more. But I mentioned there to Connor Lanahan, who got the Clannabana goal and you know, men with a host of points. This, this is this is where we're, we're in tight territory now. We're, we're round three. The loser, it's, it's you know, win, you're through the quarter final, lose, you're gone. Very, very tight game, and they often hear Tony Lesh, Roland McMahon's got them well organized now at the moment. John McAreevy and now Donnelly, 14 and 15 there against Anna Clone. So he's maybe changed it up a bit there. They've shown their ability to come, you know, um, alter their, their style. Clan the Banner will gain confidence from the win against Bosco. Maybe just going to tip Tully List just to edge this. They might have that be surprise um, just to throw a Clan the Banner that they might just be ready for. And with John McAreevy and you know, Joe McDermott there in midfield and Niall Donnelly, you, know, you can interchange them a lot. Mm-hmm. And that might just get them over the line against Clan the Banner. Ronan McMahon, of course, Tully List manager and, and previous Clan the Banner manager. So, you know, he's. he's doesn't need to have his um, scouting report too much. He should know well about what players and uh, their their plus and minuses. That's it. He might have a few ideas for a bit of sledging and that, you know. So uh, <laughs> 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 not we're not that we're advocating that sort of thing. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jamar against St Jones. Uh, Jamar nearly caused the upset um, in the intermediate. Um, pushed St Jones all the way. Um, St John's player got a got a nasty injury there against against Saul, so I hope he's um, better. I think it was a knee injury. So, um, how do you think this one can Jamar? You know that surprise factor might be out for for Jamar. I think so, John. You know this is the second meeting, and Jamar nearly caught St John's unaware in that first round, but the fact of the matter is they didn't. And St John's got bad. St. John's probably, be, more people would have viewed them as one of the favourites for this championship. I, I don't particularly think they are now. I don't think they're in the top bracket. You know, their performance against Saul, Saul were always ahead. They never, St. John's never looked like they were going to get over Saul in the last round. They will get over Dramara here. Now, I'm, I'm not even sure it's even going to be as tight as the first game was. Dramara are coming off a win against Bright now, a severely degraded Bright team in Bally Kindler. Paul Flynn was excellent. He's a he's a player that we've talked about before. He was mm-hmm. he got a Jamara goal and a points so looks obviously got the other goal, but that was a severely depleted break team now they played. So I would expect St. John's to have, have their homework done to this to the T and they'll take Jamara on this one. The surprise of that first round game I don't think will count here. And St. John's will have a too much know how. Good stuff, okay. Next one, Shamrocks against Savo. Oh, Shamrocks will kick themselves there on Monday night. You know, just 14, later we're down to 14 men and, and they just seem to run out of gas there towards the end. Um, how do you think this one's going to go? Shamrocks will take this. Um, they're still they're still up there as as one of the competitors that will fancy their chances going, going to the end of this championship. Savile will be buoyed by, by beating the Connacht. You know, that's, that's them got a, got a victory there to keep the men with a chance. They, they pulled away from, from half time onwards towards the end of the game. You know, if, if they had a fully fit Pat Haven, you would give them a, some sort of chance. But Shamrocks and Leitham, you know, hitting 114 against Leitham, very open game. Shamrocks further down the line might want to think more maybe defensively, just what they're conceding potentially, but they'll, they'll have too much firepower here and that they will take Savo. Um, I, I can't see Savo getting over this one. So, so did, did Pat Haven come on as, as a second half sub, Mark? Well, well yes, let, yeah, let it be we had um, so some role to play, but again, where is he fitness wise? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because if, 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 he's, if he's not at the top of his fitness, he's, he's likely not to have a huge impact, especially when you're coming up against a, a Shamrock side that are, are, are in good form at the moment, yeah. despite the lead them defeat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the next one then, Bally Martin or Addy Call, they play on Wednesday night. Um, we're recording this on, on Tuesday night, so we don't actually know what the outcome of that, but they play on Rake, the Real Mourn Derby, and whoever comes out of the Bally Martin Addy Call game, you know, what a what a card to have that they're gonna be playing uh Kingdom. Yeah. This the the more the Mourn Derby here on the go. 
I, I fancy Bally holding down this re range game to get over Ali Call. I think it'll be um Bally Martin versus Enrique. That'll be the, the draw. Okay. Enrique they'll be hurting off the loss from Gaff. Probably a lot of them now, you know, I'm not saying they were, you know, definitely not cocky or complacent, but a lot of them probably were expecting a good game against them, Gaff, but not to lose that that puzzle. I've seen as well in Rake now, they've added another weapon in there, Jaglin Morgan came off the bench, so he's back from Australia. So that adds to their 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 attack. Now, maybe defensively when you're leaking four goals, Bernie Rand's gonna to have to reassess that the back line because he's got it in the attack, just leaking four goals in a one of his penalties, maybe just something that needs addressed at this stage for him. Bally Martin to take Ali Call and then Enrique to beat Bally Martin. But um, just thinking that I know Enrique played from Gath in, in Long or in Castron. Sorry. Be great to this Enrique, uh, you know, Bally Martin. You know, uh, bringing that to a Warren venue, you know, really creating, you know, bring it to Longstone or bring it back to West Drummond. You know, I think it's maybe we should maybe look more at our regional grounds in mm. terms of these sort of fixtures because that would be great, you know, yeah. a more derby in Warren. Yeah. And uh, no, McCardle's actually back as well for for Enric. So they're they're adding players as well. But um, as you said, Sean uh, Clark got a, a hamstring injury. He got one of them snipers coming out of the fence. So you know, like you've only got you've only got a couple of weeks now. So it looks like he'd be pushing to get back for Enric. But um, no, that then you're thinking Tullish, St John's, Shamrocks, and Enric going through then the quarterfinals. Yeah, join Anna Clone, Saul, Leitrim and from Gaff. As I say, it's heating up, so it'll be interesting to see these matches and how they go. Great stuff. Okay, we're going on to the seniors then, and the it has thrown up probably the, the one of the most interesting knockout ties in recent years. Um, I suppose no other place to start than, than Burn versus Kilku, Mark, and... Um, you know, Warren Point must be licking their lips at this one. Yeah, the big one again. Burn has been through the ringer here. You know, they've, they've had Warren Point and now they've killed Koo again, but these things only bring you on as a team. The, the Kill Koo Warren Point game, I thought it was a great game. Uh, I know in the aftermath of the game, Warren Point deserved full praise, but it's been overshadowed a bit by the whole referee and controversy. What was what was your take on the on the on you know the referee's side of it? Like there has been, you know, there was reports that he had um, resigned and that there as well. But the, you know, the, we've seen that that it's false. You know, obviously his time his timekeeping was wrong, um, and you know how you know what 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 was your take on it then, Mark? Yeah, the, the timekeeping was a big issue, and you know, losing that game and ha not having that full duration and time paid, you're, you're going to have a grievance there, and I think that's a fair grievance to have. Very frustrating from a, a Kilku aspect, and the allegedly, you know, the the overruling the referee overruling his sideline uh, official there on a couple of occasions as well, and. You know, Kilku obviously do feel seriously agreed. Um, and you, you know, after the match and all, you would see that emotion there. But on the whole, in the game, I thought and um, the referee made a lot of good calls and um, a lot of balanced calls. But there was just those few um issues with some of the calls he made that you know, maybe did did then prove an issue uh, from a Kilku perspective. But I, I don't like things that overshadow him what was generally mm -hmm. a very good game and. Yeah. Warren Point, I, I, you know, I thought Kaku probably would have beat Warren Point in this, maybe, but Warren Point was still a, a year or two away. But the beat, the beat them, they've done the, they've done the job. Now the Magdalene's not happy enough, but in his post match interview, he wasn't getting tied away. You know, he's a smart, smart man, Nigel Magdalene, and, and he knew that we talked about this that, you know, they beat Burn, they beat Kaku now, and yet they, 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 they could face one or the other again now in the quarter final. So that, you know, there's nothing won yet, and I imagine knows that. And you could even see after the game, there's probably a bit of internal delight to the war point players, but there was no mm -hmm. massive over the top celebrations. And that showed a bit of class. And I liked as well. Now, I, I'd be, uh, be Kukui's biggest fan, bar my own club. Um, I followed them last year, and they're all our journey and all that. But Warren Point, the poor end of them. 
a lot of teams don't go toe to two, toe to toe with toe to. A lot of teams stand off them, but you could see from the off, Warren Point, straight in their faces. Mm-hmm. And there was actually quite a lot of off the ball stuff, which went unpunished too. And Conor Lowry was dragged around and it went unpunished. But so Warren Point, there's a cuteness there. They've, they've brought that to their game and they've, they've stood up to the plate there. And I, I want to just, I think they deserve immense credit for that win. And yeah. that was a very good game. You see, the, uh, I was saying earlier, the formations then, um, what formation is, is Kokuri and one point playing? Is it just they're just going for matchups and wherever you are on the pitch, that's where you are at that certain time? Or, you know, like there, it doesn't seem to be um, half forwards, half um, half backs, midfielders anymore. No, as I say, one of, one of my things I used to get great enjoyment was when you go in the Kokuri game and you're sitting 15 minutes in the stand before the game and you're playing the jigsaw game where you're guessing what bloody way they're going to set up their team and <laughs> the, the, the nine changes from the match programme and you know you see you see the way they pre out their team the, the, you know programmes don't mean anything anymore mm-hmm. they're a piece of paper now that's really all they are um, Kuku do look their matchups now they do generally get their matchups right and one point I think got their matchups right on this occasion mm-hmm. too in a lot of instances but yeah it's get your matchups right and then then your system comes into play where you literally you get everybody back you hit on the counter you get your ball tires on. Kuku are very good at getting the ball tires um, in possession. Shane Johnson's emerged in that role. Ryan Johnson, he's seen some amount of possession the other night. And that 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 that's really I think you know, it, it's very systematic, but in terms of positions and half backs and all that, that really doesn't mean anymore with those mm-hmm. elite teams and down now. It's 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 playing integrated within a system and performing your role, you know, yeah. instead of Playing your traditional cornerback and playing your traditional left half back, it's, mm-hmm. they don't really come into the equation anymore. How is Burn going to counteract, like especially Kuku with their, their permanent sweeper that allows Ram McAvoy then to, to make them surge and runs up the field, which is something that Warren Point have adapted into their game, it seems. Yeah, the, the Warren Point, of, they've murdered Kuku to an extent, and you know, you might as well do it from learning from the best, but Burn. Burn are going into this game, they're going to play a complete team that are wounded and you know, you're up against the all Ireland finest here who are really, for want of a better term, ripping about that one point of feet on so many levels. There's going to be a serious reaction here. Um, one thing that's been interesting, they only brought um, one change off the bench against one point. Are, you know, are we going to see Darrell O'Hanlon? and are we going to see Aaron Morgan in at some stage? Is, is Justin Clark going to come into the equation? I was a wee bit, um, you know, I was just a wee bit dubious. Why, why only one change mm. off the bench? Yeah, that's right. That's very true. Yeah, like, was it, like, were they hiding, holding something back? Do you know that that was? I know. But that, that's, what, that's, that's what Kill Ku do. They, they <laughs> think, you know, they sitting think, why did they only bring on? Like, they might be doing all the reason, the fact, when he got one sub off. Like, <laughs> other teams start thinking, why, why are they only doing that? We should start doing that. You know? <laughs> that's how it works with Kill Ku. Yeah, yeah. um, no, they, they, they're going to take Warren here. Warren, you know, they've lost the Warren point. They weren't massively impressive um, against Castlewell in the last round. I don't know, Burn are, are they at themselves? If they are, you know, they could throw a, a curveball here and produce their best performance mm-hmm. in the three rounds of the eighth, but they've a they've a wounded animal on Kaku here who will look over juggler and I can see Kaku get into the quarters. Brilliant. Okay. The next one, um Breda against Lockin Island. Um two managers that have swapped. Uh Jory Gormley went to Lockin Island and Bundy Mason went to Breda, so like both teams again know each other inside out. That's going to be, um, you know, families involved and and everything they got. There's a, there's a father and son again in opposition. So, Mark, how do you think this one's going to go? Mm, hard one to predict. Jody had great. Jody Burnley great success with Breda and um, Bundy obviously Lock and Island legend. Breda there again. At, they're they're fine. They're still fine. Their feet really at senior football. You know they're they're only in it a couple of years now. Um, Lock and Island season senior championship team. They came through against Star Cross. They're ten seven. Didn't set the world alight. And I don't mean to be too critical on them, but Lock and Island don't haven't caught you know fire yet by any stretch of the imagination. 
this is the third round. If they're going to do it, they could do it now. Rita still have a lot of work to do. I, I don't think Rita know their, their best 15 at the moment. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's an issue because they had a topsy turvy league campaign where they done a good bit of experiment. And so they might know their top 15. Are we going low scoring here? I, you know, is there enough firepower in both teams to make this high scoring? Hard to know, but Lock and Island, if, if there's a performance in them, they, they, they could get over this and, you know, get, you know, they're maybe on Harold as such, they could get into the quarterfinal. Okay. Um, we'll go for Longstone against either RGE or Carried Off. Again, this one to be played on Wednesday. Um, our condolences to the Carried Off Club um, and, you know, the RGE then. The game's played for, for, for the Wednesday. Um, Firstly, RG against Kaidov. How do you think that one will go? And then the stone to play to play the winners. I'm going on the premise that Kaidov will, will take RGU. Again, simply we're talking about the reaction Kaidov had from that drop in the hat against Kundup. I would tip Kaidov to come come over RGU there and up against Longstone. Now Longstone were buoyed by their, their win over Lachan in the first round, brought back down there by Bali Hone. Maybe look more limited than people expected um, of them. They did look a wee bit, you know, bereft of options at times. And Bally Holland were, were just more organised. This this could be an interesting one if it's Longstone carried up. Longstone will be, you know, looking today. They they will pass the chances of a quarter final berth. Carried up can only improve, I think, from here. If they get momentum by getting over RGU and get a good win there. I think they could actually come overcome Longstone and carry it off in the last eight. I suppose the Stone aren't as, uh, you know, they played brilliant to get over Lock and End, and then, you know, they had apparently the, the shooting boots weren't on against, um, you know, Bally Home. So they're somewhere in the middle there. Benny's just find out where, like, you know, they're not as bad and not as good as, as maybe they were led to believe. So, you know, it is his first year, and he's probably just trying to find out, you know, who, who he has and who he can rely on. Yeah, that, that could be the case. And, you know, they're, they're a team there that ha have, a, you know, a big age gap there. And it's, it's, it's the experience of Mark Cole and Ambrose Rogers, which is, is going to be vital in a game like this. And they'll need the, the, the young fellas with the run and that mm -hmm. to, to complement that. But again, my point being, if Ty off, get over the RGU, you know, there's a like, quick enough corner in him, there's going to be yeah. momentum there. And, mm -hmm. you know, the momentum means a lot now as we progress in this championship. And that's where the possibility the win there, and then they just have too much along. So, well, as you said, the last time they carried off, um, Mark, do we need to sort out the, the, that defensive frailty that they have, you know, to, to ship the four goals? Look, sometimes you lose a game and you can't pinpoint why they lost to Clint up and. The reason why they lost the stern at them, so they've been able to address that. That's you know that was a very obvious um, weakness in their play, and they've had a wee bit extra time now to look at it. So that'll be ironed out. It has to be, um, and that's why I'd be confident that they 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 love that sort of. Brilliant, and a game. <clears throat> then the two old foes going head to head, and and teams that have had a say in the senior championship for for many a year. Clondoff against Mayor Bridge. Uh, Clondoff, as you said earlier, how they lost that match, you know, there'll be a lot of questions asked. Mayor Bridge have had um, two difficult games, but, you know, they've come through it. Hard one to call this one. Aye, it is hard to call. Bridge, great win against Glenn. Um, you know, I know their their goal now is to Conor her got the finishing touches to the goal and that. But we mentioned about the the performance of Charlie Smith. Mm -hmm. I know you, Shane Allen in there too, and and the legs of Ryan really great options there. And, and Kieran McKeever, you know, he, that Bridge team can take a lot from the fact that you know he's played the highest level of RMA. His coaching is is one of the main things he does in his life. He's coming from Cullihanna, you know, a senior championship team in Armagh. So he's a have a lot of experience of championship football. Now he's got them into this third round. They're, they're playing okay. I, I think down the line, a couple of years down the line, if he sticks with them, there'll be a different mm -hmm. proposition than they are now. They'll develop more. Clint 
still can't get my head around how they threw that lead away. Uh, that is bound to really deflated them. But look, these things can be worked on. They need to look at that and why that happened. Actually examine and talk about why did we lose a 14-5 lead? Why did we lose a nine-point lead such a critical juncture in the game? You need it, you need to find the core reason why. And once they do that, they can look down at not happening again. I think we're in for a cracking game here. Mm. Um if Conduct can rediscover the form that had that big tied up, that they, they might be able to maybe just edge it here over the bridge who are, are very much a development team. Yeah. No, I was I say I was commenting on the on the Brands for Conduct game and for me, and I was looking back at it, do you think the fact that they're playing against the wind and the kickouts, they, they didn't seem to have a kickout strategy to get their hands on the ball. You know, they sort of just loaded up the midfield. Bransford loaded, put it, Mark Reid actually in midfield then and overloaded the right hand side. You know, do you think that that would have been a factor that they couldn't get it, the, the, their primary possession? Could be. And, you know, I know their kickouts were great against carried up um, in terms of how everybody held back in the kind of half back line. And then as soon as the trainer kicked the ball over the ram in the space and ran onto the ball. But maybe they're in lies part of the rest in terms of maybe are a bit one dimensional with their kickouts and um, when they were faced with something else, they didn't know how to diverge from what they had originally planned. And that, that's a fair point in terms of maybe having a plan B and plan C with, with kickouts and mm-hmm. responding to opposition's kickouts too. You know, it's, it's the finer details, isn't it, that, uh, that sometimes you know, makes the best for teams and um, is there anything that, that you think you've mentioned that you think Lock and got through Maybridge or sorry, who did you say Clondoff or Maybridge? I think Clondoff, yeah. Yeah. Um Clondoff, Kilku and um Carry Duff. Mm-hmm. These teams are in the back door, they've got a week then to get their themselves in the quarter final. You know, what will they be doing now, do you think, that to get themselves ready for this game coming up? Yeah, well, look, we're, we're, we're out again this weekend and then the, the following weekend's the quarterfinals. I suppose from my own experience with teams, it's with these short windows, you're obviously not going 100 miles an hour at your training sessions and you're, you're probably trying to look after the boys that have niggles and, and retweaks. So you're not going to be able to use everybody in your sessions. You're, you're maybe going to be working on things like set pieces, your sideline balls, working on your kick-out strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, more tactical based stuff really at this stage you know the, what are you going to do now in terms of fitness what are you going to you know you're not going to make it you can't tweak as you say the finer things of our games mm-hmm. that those we integral parts of game plans and all that are, are present especially at senior championship level so they'll be looking tactically and um, maybe a lot of positioning and in terms of backs against forwards play and I'm, I'm working working sort of game stage plays as well so that's what I'd imagine is going on at the moment um, but again it's, it's the injury factor and there was a lot of injuries again we did yeah. call that you know yeah. a lot of injuries mm-hmm. I know Latham got a few as well and yeah. that's that's that could be the winning and losing of a, a lot of the games now going forward mm-hmm. the hopefully then moving forward as well for, for ourselves We'll be able to get uh, people from from the clubs on as well because everyone's being very coy about uh, they're still in the championship. Obviously, there's the, the the losers of the losers section as well going on. Um, you know some massive clubs there, and you know, can understand where their, their their whole focus is in. So by this time next week, someone's going to be out of the championship. So it'll be interesting to see you know where they thought their season was won and lost, or or how they could have done better. So um, be looking forward to that. Um. With the performances then, Mark, who was the standout? Obviously, Warren Point were, were phenomenal in, in the senior um, championship, but anyone else catch your eye and, and players that caught your eye that, that maybe you haven't spoke about? <clears throat> yeah, just a few, I suppose a few notable matches as such. Um, Connor Lanahan from Clannabana, um, great performance, scoring performance as well. Ross McGarry for Warren Point. Mm-hmm. Um, He's, you know, bulked up physically, can hold his own and confident from the freeze. Put in a ferocious hit on Eugene Browning as well. He put himself about and he will be a big player for Warren Point in the next round. Mm-hmm. Um, again, moving down intermediate, Paul Flynn from Jamara. 
again a great great championship he's having. And I think a special shout out down to the junior to the forty seven year old Damian Milligan, who scored a fist of goal for, for our glass against Zahad Erg on Monday night. And I just think that's great yeah. to see a man up there. Like you know, that man played, you know, in the nineties on a very successful our glass teams and he's won a couple of junior championships. So great great to see that. That's a real you know, Royal Rovers sort of story yeah, there. No, it was it was brilliant and, and you know, it's great to see and, and the championship always brings up something like that as well, like some some great stories with, with, with boys back playing out there. So well done, Damien. I told you I would get you a mention anyway, so well done <laughs> on the show. Um Mark, as always, fantastic. Um as I say, we'll be moving forward with the with the team selections then. Uh there's no dates. When is the dates released for the junior championship and, and venues and that? Is there any word yet? No, well, they're going to come to it. I think uh, not after this weekend, not this weekend, the following weekend, the, the senior, intermediate, junior um, quarterfinals will take place along with the senior and intermediate relegation playoffs. So I presume we'll be waiting the next next Monday night, Tuesday, right. for, for that to all come out. So yeah. um, that's that's when the real business starts occurring. That's that's whenever people fall out with, with predictions and that. <laughs> indeed, indeed, that's when it gets nasty. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, you know, fantastic work again, Mark, and we'll, we'll be doing the um, team of the week in each in each um, championship then. So, uh, thanks very much for all your help. Um, as I said, the East Belfast man, you know, great to have you on. Um, and Mark will be interesting to see now how each team does. And, and as I said, one team's out now, so it's great to see we're in we're in championship mode now. We are indeed, and that's that's what it's all about. This not very spot people want and I'm looking forward to these next few weeks <laughs> well we'll see how we get on next week cheers Mark thanks for coming on alright thank you, thank you.